Hello again, everyone. It's great seeing you again, and thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather, uh, Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service. I'll be hosting today's show. Up first, has weather, hazardous weather graphic. Uh, first one here showing uh, yellow areas along the coast. That's a wind chill advisory that's out tonight until noon tomorrow for wind chills of 50 degrees below zero here for the western Arctic coast. Uh, uh, Wainwright on down to uh, Point Lay, Point Hope, Cape Lisburn, Kivalina on down to, but does not include Kotzebue, and also the north coast there, the Seward Peninsula, Shishmaref, uh, looking at wind chills to 45 below zero there uh, tonight until noon tomorrow. Otherwise, another area, there's a, not a wind chill advisory, but a, basically a snow advisory here for the northern panhandle. And that uh, kicks into effect uh, at some time tonight and continues into uh, tomorrow afternoon in the east, tomorrow afternoon, 3 p.m. at Juneau, for example, but ends earlier on here back toward the coast. And that's for anywhere from three to six inches of snow expected to fall in the uh, northern southeast coast here in the illuminated areas uh, tonight or by tomorrow afternoon by the time it ends. And from there, moving on to satellite imagery, uh, showers kind of uh, a little bit of a break came in across southern Panhandle with the rainfall or rain and snow turning off ahead of some more moisture that uh, higher clouds coming onto the coast at picture time here, but uh, looked like they were partly sunny skies and basically dry over most areas of the southern southeast coast. Light snow still falling up around the Juneau area today and uh, kind of off and on along the North Gulf Coast. Still an upper level trough and uh, actually low pressure circulation here in the western Gulf of Alaska. That same surface low slowly edging eastward. Big increase in the winds here that were farther to the west yesterday shifting eastward as the low center pushes eastward. Seeing gusts uh, 56 miles an hour on Augustine Island today and kind of gusty through the western Alaska range passes but nothing too serious. Uh, snow occurring Sparavon the entire day. Uh, tapering off over the Cuscombe Valley, but extending on down to Iliamna and actually Kodiak Island, seeing temperatures right around 20, light snow and uh, northwest winds or west-northwest winds gusting about 35 miles an hour, 30 to 35 miles an hour at the state airport. And snow continued to fall several inches falling over the southern Kenai Peninsula, Homer, Port Graham, and those areas, and areas of uh, snow showers extending really across all of South Central Alaska today. Light snow at times, uh, Talkeetna, for example. And uh, mostly clouds here. Could have been some light snow showers over the interior, especially through this portion here, but nothing too terribly heavy. And then we've got a uh, small low pressure area kind of uh, forming along the ice edge back here to the west, tracking uh, eastward. And actually, there was another one right there bringing some snow showers into the southwest coast. Uh, that uh, slipping on in toward uh, Togiak. Uh, this afternoon with some uh, snow shower activity. Another one back here looks like this will kind of take a track farther to the north. And then we have got the big storm that stands out uh, pretty vividly there. Center coming around with that spin and the front south of the Aleutians, but uh, that spread snow the entire day. Snow falling with uh, winds up close to 40 miles an hour at ADAC today. Uh, actually kind of a couple of bands, the main front down here and then another band up through here, trough uh, coming through, mostly overrunning, but uh, high clouds spreading in, some light snow actually falling at uh, on Alaska this afternoon. And on the chart, uh, there's that first trough bringing the first surge of moisture northward, the main snow area back down to the south for Adak and Atka, pretty uh, uh, moderate low, uh, reasonably intense, 975 millibars there, pretty good uh, pressure field with it. But that's going to track eastward and not northward and uh, won't be much more of a 
impact on the Aleutians, but it will spread eastward here. The winds will and uh, begin to lighten up. In fact, already not too bad, shimmying at two, uh, 15, 20 mile an hour winds out of the northeast, mostly clear skies there. High pressure developing over the southwest interior, starting to dry it out here. Colder temperatures, uh, temperatures ranged uh, today from right around 20 below at Buckland and Kotzebue to 43 down at Ketchikan today where the uh, little bit of sunshine breaking out there, also sunshine breaking out along the west coast here, but much colder with the uh, snow area mostly from, uh, well, the eastern central Arctic coast southward into uh, Cook Inlet and then those gusty winds in areas here down to Kodiak Island. Starting to pick up in the Barren Islands now as this low slowly tracks eastward and uh, otherwise uh, clearing out with that northwest wind on the lee side of the Alaska Range there with uh, banked up clouds on the north side. For tonight, we'll see this uh, system, the low center kind of drops off the map there and begins to push eastward. There's actually another low center not showing up on this. It's, it's off the chart that's also pushing eastward, but still uh, pretty good east-southeast winds and rain and snow spreading eastward. Could get some light stuff here continuing there for the Fox Islands. Pribilofs, uh, look for some snow to shift up to your area tonight. Otherwise, high pressure, uh, colder temperatures, definitely below zero anywhere west of the Alaska Range. And pretty breezy, Cook Inlet, and uh, on down to Kodiak, and through the uh, possibly the uh, Susitna Valley as well, and through the passes of the Alaska Range. And a trough uh, coming over the top of the ridge, light snow persisting, actually the same one, but uh, up there. So chances of, uh, or continuation of periods of light snow, nothing significant extending down, possibly in the northern Koyukuk Valley areas. Otherwise, just uh, less in the way of snow showers, a little bit more in the way of clearing, trending that way anyway, here over the eastern interior areas. And uh, again, snow advisory, three to six inches, kicks in tonight for the northern Panhandle, mixture along the south coast. And that area of snow finally pulls far enough to the east there, Kodiak Island, you'll be clearing out. And then for tomorrow, mostly sunny skies, lighter winds uh, everywhere here, even uh, channeled areas of uh, Cook Inlet and South Central Alaska and the North Gulf Coast. Could still be some gust through the uh, Prince William Sound area, but nothing very serious, just clear skies, cold temperatures below zero, much in the interior, especially west and north of the Alaska Range all the way out to the Arctic coast. Uh, just a uh, couple skiffs of snow possible there on the east side of the coast. And also with uh, remnants of that moisture that's coming across the Burning Sea today, that'll kick into night and then kind of stall out and make for a mostly cloudy, maybe flurryish kind of day there for the uh, Norton Sound area. That could extend on up into the uh, Noatak Valley. St. Lawrence Island clearing out with high pressure back to the west. Just a narrow band of some snow showers here over the central Bering Sea. This system shifting eastward. Look for some uh, pretty good winds here for the eastern Aleutians Alaska Peninsula out of the east, but the moisture field staying to the south and uh, stays unsettled over the panhandle with uh, best chance of snow in the northern areas and snow or rain showers down to the south. Outlook for Monday, that big storm system uh, continues to track eastward here with a uh, push in the north, uh, really tight gradient, definitely storm force or severe storm force winds with this thing uh, in advance of the frontal boundary, but probably staying south at least through Monday of the offshore areas of the Gulf of Alaska. That looks good for gales for Kodiak. Easterly winds probably pulling some moisture in at some point in the day for a threat of some rain or snow on the, west, on the east side of Kodiak Island. Increasing wind and precipitation chances on the central and south coast of the Panhandle. Otherwise, not too bad. Kind of a break. Interior Alaska looking really good. Cold, high pressure, variably cloudy in some areas, mostly clear in others. A little breezy down here to the south in the Aleutians. Uh, next system beginning to bear down on the western and central areas late in the day. Lows tonight into the uh, minus 20s to mid minus 30s here, anywhere over the interior, especially in the clearer and calmer areas. A little milder here to the east with continued cloud cover. And uh, southeast coast, though, right near freezing all the way down to Ketchikan. Mid-teens, Kodiak, lower 20s of Pribloffs, and ADAC about 35. Highs tomorrow just under 40 for the Aleutians, below zero west and north of the Alaska Range. And you can see uh, much chillier temperatures, single digits for the Susitna Manuska Valley, and lower teens for the Kenai Peninsula, lower 20s for Kodiak. And then highs for the Panhandle tomorrow in the 30s, uh, 
probably stay below 40, so a little cooling over those southern areas from what you had today. And then lows the following morning, upper teens north, upper 20s south, mid 20s below zero, Copper River Basin, Golcana. Looks like below zero weather here. Again, for the Kenai Peninsula, East Anchorage, the Sitna Valley down to 15 below, definitely below zero for the northern interior, staying that way through the afternoon. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to flying weather, we've got uh, Banda IFR up here from northern Koyukuk Valley on out uh, to the eastern coastline up there, some VFR to the west, VFR to the east and south and southeast. Marginal VFR, uh, roughly Tanana Valley, eastward to the border, down across the uh, Alaska Range into the Talkeetnas, and then VFR here to the south into Prince William Sound, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak Island, VFR, as well as Bristol Bay, up the southwest coast, uh, roughly Cape Ramans off northward to Nome, and along the south coast of the Seward Peninsula, over to Nalato Hills, marginal, marginal VFR, uh, central bearing down to the Fox Islands, Pervlos right on the edge, IFR to ADAC, and IFR along and off the southeast coast. For the afternoon, some IFR over toward uh, Stewart and Hyder. Otherwise, uh, marginal VFR with uh, even some VFR along the coast showing up, uh, but marginal here for the Gulf of Alaska, eastern North Gulf Coast into central Prince William Sound, possibly. Otherwise, VFR here over the interior. Could be some actually lingering marginal VFR or even IFR here over the eastern Alaska range with some moisture that's kind of nudging back in across the border, possibly. Otherwise, pretty good here over the interior. Eastern bearing, not bad. Marginal VFR central bearing. Marginal for the Aleutians. <clears throat> and then for Monday morning, good VFR here from the Pervlofs right up to the southwest coast. In fact, the VFR fly from the Pribloffs all the way into Anchorage, if you're taking that. And uh, Kodiak Island looking good as well. Some marginal VFR, Koyukuk Valley, back to the northwest, but most of the North Slope Arctic coast looking good. And some uh, lower stuff still here along the eastern border. Uh, pretty isolated though, especially eastern Copper River Basin. Marginal southern panhandle VFR to the north in the afternoon. Uh, looking really nice there. Southeast coast VFR. All the way up Yakutat, North Gulf Coast VFR. Just about all of interior Alaska now in the VFR zone. Even the uh, southeast bearing, Bristol Bay. Kodiak, though, marginal, Fognac Island VFR. And the uh, Arctic Coast, North Slope, uh, open with VFR flying. A big area IFR here coming in over the just about all the Aleutians. Uh, oh, to about uh, Akun Island. Uh, Fox Island's marginal, Perloff's marginal. Passes, Anatovic and Adigan for tomorrow, VFR for both passes the entire day. Lake Clark and Merrill, good as well, VFR for the, probably the next couple of days as well as rainy and windy, good VFR for Isabel, marginal to start uh, turning toward VFR uh, into the afternoon possibly going VFR. I think it'll be at some point in the day tomorrow will be VFR, kind of oscillating back and forth, right on the edge. Mintasta, marginal VFR, Chance of some IFR conditions as well here uh, for this pass, but Tanita, open, VFR, portage, ceilings, visibility is unlimited, and Chilkoot and White, uh, stirring out marginal, could become IFR, some uh, increased moisture slips on up into the area in the, during the afternoon hours, especially toward evening. And for the freezing levels here, about like yesterday, only the surface, 2,000 feet way down there toward Vancouver Island, Otherwise, at the surface here, right along the southeast coast, kind of a little bit of a warm nudge up, but not much. And uh, surface here south of the Pribilofs, uh, but north of the central Aleutians. Icing, best chance will be here along the southeast coast of rime or mixed, but it'll be light with just some very isolated, considerable moderate possible, above roughly 5,000 feet. Otherwise, uh, this next area here sliding by to the south, missing the eastern Aleutians. And the jet stream here showing tomorrow upper level ridging coming in across the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula here. Uh, elongated trough right through here all the way down to uh, south of the Queen Charlotte's uh, with northwest flow across Kodiak Island. Kind of a split in the flow here. This jet coming back to around to the south and at 9,000 feet high pressure in over the Bristol Bay area southeast bearing. 
and northwest winds 30 to or 30 35 knots here maybe even it's a little bit stronger across Kodiak Island the western Alaska range 45 knot easterlies uh, due to the gradient between the low to the south and that high and uh, 15 to 25 for the panhandle 3,000 feet up to 45 knots eastern Aleutians 30 35 Kodiak Island and Kamishak Bay translates into uh, occasional moderate chop here for the Alaska Peninsula eastern Aleutians and along the lee side of the eastern Alaska range. It used to be that you could only warn one person about a tornado after it had already blown down someone else's barn. Now, on average, we're able to issue a tornado warning 15 minutes before the tornado's even there, and that wouldn't be happening without Doppler radar. This next rad system has reduced fatalities on the order of 45% due to tornadoes since its advent. We have a lot more information now about storms and being able to understand how they develop, how they produce severe weather, and how that information might be used to improve warnings for our National Weather Service partners. The lab is unique in that we serve the nation by supporting the National Weather Service and its mission to protect lives and safe property by improving the accuracy and the lead time of severe weather warnings. We have a legacy of radar research and converting existing technology from military to weather purposes. A recycled Doppler radar led to the development of NEXRAD, installed nationwide in the early 90s. It allowed forecasters to see storms like never before. Not only did we help bring that technology to the National Weather Service and to help protect lives and property, but we have continued to upgrade that technology, keep it relevant, and keep it state of the art. Recently, a major upgrade was added. Dual polarization technology takes the radar from 2D to 3D. Forecasters now know more about what type of precipitation is falling, which is very helpful during winter storms, as well as how much rain is accumulating, resulting in better flash flood warnings. The radar can also detect and track tornadoes based on debris. Looking to the future, the National Severe Storms Lab is testing the capabilities of phased array radar. Originally used by the U.S. Navy, the antenna scans the skies electronically rather than mechanically, allowing the radar to focus on a storm. With current technology, we get a full picture or image of what is going on within a storm every four to five minutes. So it's more like a snapshot. Whereas with phased array radar, we get that picture of what's going on in the storm every minute. So it becomes more like watching a movie. So we can do adaptive, rapid scanning on the storms that matter most, being able to provide the information that's most relevant when and where it's happening. Another advantage of phased array radar is its multifunction capability, providing weather and air traffic information simultaneously. Number one, it is a system that promises to replace and expand upon the existing weather surveillance radars. Secondly, to replace aging air traffic surveillance radars. And number three, it offers a potential application to meet Department of Homeland Security and Defense requirements for identifying and tracking non-cooperative aircraft. With the replacement of all these various radars with a single system, the American taxpayer could realize substantial savings in cost have a lot fewer radars to maintain and the electronic capability of this also reduces maintenance costs because you do not have moving parts. Not too long ago, the ability to predict severe weather was thought to be impossible. During the past several decades, research conducted at the National Severe Storms Lab has developed life-saving tools like Doppler radar. We've progressed from no warning of threatening weather to about a 15-minute lead time, and current research promises to extend that much further. 
our knowledge of severe storms and how they behave, and our use and ability to use the Doppler radar technology and is, is in a lot of cases a direct result of that close working relationship, that research to operations component that we get between the National Severe Storms Laboratory and a forecast office. That history and understanding of how these data can be used by our users and doing the research to help advance the use of radar technology. Really, it's what we live for. It's in our lifeblood. It's in our history. It's now easier than ever to be a part of Weather Research. We just launched the mPing app for both iPhone and Android users, and it's totally free. Ping, which stands for Precipitation Identification Near the Ground, is a research project by the NOAA National Severe Storms Lab and the University of Oklahoma. With the mobile app, you can send us your weather observations on the go. Are snowflakes falling on your head? Is hail hitting your car? Just select what type of precipitation is falling and press submit. It's that easy. It takes about five seconds and it's anonymous. Reports can then be viewed online. Our scientists will compare your report with what the radar has detected. This helps us develop new radar technologies and techniques. Download the app today, share your reports, and let's work together to make our nation weather ready. Learn more here and follow us. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Today's sea ice analysis uh, starting to uh, actually shift back to the north a little bit, uh, the outer edge. And a uh, report came in that uh, back out here to the west, along the edge, or a little bit north there, some of the uh, strips of ice are actually 10 feet out of the water. So that's a uh, pretty good uh, kind of uh, interesting and it looks like the forecast is uh, it'll shift a little bit north here over the next day or so and then begin to drift westward. And then uh, a couple days after that, some northerly winds will come through and it'll begin to come south again. So really over the next five days, not looking for any big uh, change in any one direction, just kind of shifting around with whichever way the wind blows. And for the uh, coastal forecast here, for the marine forecast, south coast, uh, west winds 20, 25 knots, uh, strongest there along the coast, Prince Wales Island in the uh, marine zone there with seas up to 13 feet, 15 knots on the north coast, seas 10 feet, Lynn Canal north 15, seas 3 feet, swing the direction around the south for Stevens Passage, uh, 15 knots, 3 foot seas, kind of a variable wind pattern here across all the inside waters tomorrow, clearance straight southeast at 10. And those will pick up here as that uh, big storm that's farther way out to the southwest there. Front coming in close enough to bring good gales into the uh, coastal water areas here at 40 knots from the southeast on the south coast, east on the north coast. He's building to around 15 feet in the afternoon. Winds coming up uh, Clarence Strait, small craft advisory southeast 25. Seas building to 8 feet. Small craft advisory also for Lynn Canal, north 25 and 5 foot seas. Lighter winds for Stevens Passage at 15 knots out of the east. And for Prince William Sound tomorrow, uh, pretty brisk there with uh, northwest sustained 30 knots, higher gusts out of the western bays. And also small craft advisories northwest 25 for the eastern north Gulf Coast. North winds 30 knots for the west side. Barren Islands, northwest 35 knots and 40 knot northwest winds for Kamishak Bay. But uh, down to 15, Southern Cook Inlet and 10 knots north of the Forelands. Forecast for Monday, northeast winds here, uh, Northern Cook Inlet at 15 knots, but uh, stronger so Southern Cook Inlet north coming up to 30 knots, 8 foot seas. 35 knot northeast winds now for Kamishak Bay. Same thing for the Barren Islands and the Western North Gulf Coast. All those areas, northeast 35, seas running 
anywhere from 8 to 12 feet there and northeast 30 knots, eastern North Gulf Coast, and northeast 20, so winds coming down there for Prince William Sound, sea subsiding to four feet. Kodiak Island, northwest 30, 35 knots with the Gales and Shelikoff Strait, seas eight to 10 feet. Sitkanak to San, uh, Castle Cape, north 25, and then Gales, Castle Cape to Cape Sarachev, east coming up to 40 knots there, 13 foot sea, small craft advisories on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, and Bristol Bay, northeast winds at about 20 knots. And then for Monday, we'll bring it up to 30 knots out of the northeast for Bristol Bay and east 30 knots here with 11 foot seas on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. South side, northeast 45 knots here for the uh, area from uh, uh, or the uh, southern or the Bering or the Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula. I got these storm warnings in my mind here with uh, from Castle Cape right up the east side of Kodiak. We're looking at northeast winds sustained at 50 knots, seas building 18 to 22 feet and almost a storm there for Shilikoff straight out of the northeast of 45. And for the Aleutians, uh, gales here for the Fox Islands tomorrow, strongest on the Pacific side, east northeast 45 knots there, 25 to 30 for the central Aleutians tapering off to 20 out west. And the outlook for Monday. Uh, minimum gales here on the Pacific side of the Fox Islands, small craft advisories everywhere else out of the east at 30, except the far western Aleutians, east 35 knots. Southwest coast, south to southeast 20 knots, southeast 25 for the Pribilofs, and 15 knot winds, Norton Sound and St. Lawrence Island. And that uh, 15 knot wind holds through Monday, changed the direction a little bit. Brisk wind advisories here for the southwest coast, or you, uh, the Cusquam Delta coast, and small craft advisories for the Perbloffs east, er, east 30 knots, seas 13 feet. Eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, 15 to 20 knot westerlies, southerlies 20 knots there from Wales to Cape Beaufort. And for Monday, south to southeast 15, southwest 15, or 10 to 15 for the remainder of the coastline up there. And for tonight, uh, snow up here to the north, nothing heavy, windy and less in the way of snow, slowly diminishing cloud south central Alaska. And then here's that next big storm coming to the south, bringing the gales into the panhandle during the afternoon on Monday, clear and cold in the interior. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.